This is probably the biggest downgrade I have ever seen for a character design. I mean, this man is ripped and has a great design with his hair, his eye, and everything. And then he goes to this. He legitimately becomes uh, like a, a Saitama slash Naruto cosplayer. And I'm just like... Oh my goodness, like, my boy, you got massacred, like, you legitimately, you got massacred, but, I mean, regardless of the design decision, it does make sense plot-wise going forward and all of that, I, I understand the messages and everything, it's beautiful, and I do support it completely, but it's just like, my man, he lost, like, just a part of himself with that design change, but I will eventually get used to it, but I'm just like, oh my goodness, I, I, I can't believe it, I just, I, I can't, so I guess since I'm already talking about it, I guess let's talk about the reasoning behind the hair, why it's gone, and why it's very important going forward, besides the obvious what we saw revealed at the end of the episode, or at least the final episode for the first core of Mushoku Tensei. So basically, he cut his hair off because he realized that his green hair attracts a lot of attention, and it causes it to where people freak out, they say he's dead end, they run away, etc, etc. We... We understand this. That was very clear by why he cut his hair. However, there's more meaning behind that. One of the other elements of meaning behind it is the fact that when it comes to hair being cut, it is a sign of growth and change. It's a sign of a new journey, a new direction for you as a person. This is something that's always appeared in almost every single manga or anime that's had a character get their hair cut. There's been countless. I can't even begin to describe all of them, but one of the most noteworthy moments for me, at least when it comes to hair being cut, was definitely Shirazu and Tokyo Ghoul Re, the manga. So basically, hair cutting has always been a major step for a character. And as we know, Rui, which I'm calling him Rui because if I tried to say his entire full name, I would just butcher his name. So as I clarified in my previous episode review, I'm calling him Rui for short because I don't think you want to hear me say Ruajard or something like that. You can understand how bad that would probably sound. But anyways, getting back on topic. The point though is, is that Rui, his hair being cut basically shows he's wanting to actually change as an individual. He wants to be a better person. He wants to be more understanding. He wants to be more understanding of what Rudy is fighting for and what he's trying so hard to do. There's just so much you can really take by the way he cut his hair. I appreciate that. It shows that there is definitely change happening amongst the group, not just for, let's say, Rui, but also for Rudy as well, which, by the way, there's a lot of R's in this series, like Rudy, Rui, Roxy, yeah, I, I've been meaning to mention that, but there, there's just so many, but, uh, okay, um, sorry, I keep getting off topic, but... Basically, seeing how he made that change and then that little talk, that, you know, declaration, like, that talk towards Rudy at the end is very powerful to show that going forward, there really isn't going to be as many problems between the two because they're finally understanding what each other is actually fighting for. So, yeah, I, I really appreciate just that, in you know, final segment, despite me really really being a little bit off-put by the design decision with the hair being completely gone, as I said, it does make sense going forward. I, I fully understand, and I will get used to it because I do respect good writing. Just, oh my goodness, like, it just, it, it, it really caught me by surprise because, like, the man really had a great, like, JoJo-type design going on, and then that, and just like, oh goodness. But okay, uh, anyways, this is the final episode of Mushoku Tensei, like, the final episode until, I believe, Summer of Anime 2021. So we gotta wait a full season of anime until the series returns, which, once again, as I've always said when it comes to series being split, this is good for the health of a series. I mean, anyone that has made it to this point watching Mushoku Tensei, and you have seen all the episodes and all that, you'll know how high quality this series has been. I talked about it so much already. The animation, the art, the voice acting, the immersion with just the demon language. Just there's so much that's been thrown in that you just don't normally see given to any anime. It's not done. And because of how much passion, effort, and love has been put into this anime, 
it makes sense why, you know, there would be probably a break. It, it, they need a break. For the quality of the series to be as high as it is right now and to continue this quality, it needs to go on break for the animators have time to work on it. Because if they're continuously pumping out episode after episode after episode after episode when no breaks in between, eventually the quality is going to, whoop, just straight nosedive and it's not going to be that good. I mean, we've seen it countless times from long-running anime. Even if the series wants to be kind of like long-running, there still needs to be breaks. I feel like this new era of long-running to where there's breaks in between, I appreciate it more. It's kind of like how My Hero Academia does it. How My Hero Academia, it has like a season comes out, and then you wait like maybe six to eight months, and then the next season comes out. I like that format. Even though it sucks to wait, yes, I understand that. It's better to have, you know, the series have quality, keep that consistency, with a break in between, because it builds up that anticipation for what is to come, and it also allows the manga to actually get further ahead of the anime, so you don't have full arcs dedicated to filler, and that's a whole other can of worms in itself, and I think everybody knows, if you watch any long-running series, you know how filler is, and how it can easily derail a series to the point to where there's no return, Full Metal Alchemist. There you go. Back into the main point though, season two, or at least the second half of season one, the second core of Mushoku Tensei is going to be coming out in summer of anime, so it's really not that long. It's just one season, and this upcoming season we already have some really good contenders to be, you know, looking forward to, so we're going to be probably a-okay. There, there's a lot of good stuff already that I've already peaked, so... Yeah, I'm not really concerned. I feel like we're going to have things tied us over until then, and then it's going to return, and then we're probably going to be very happy to have it back once again, and hopefully there is, you know, a new conclusion, like a new continuation, like a season three or whatever, season two, that is announced for Mushoku Tensei when that season airs. Let's actually talk about the content of this episode, the finale of the first half. So... Basically, Rudy went through a huge amount of development within this episode, and we get to see kind of, if he is pushed to a certain point, his overall pride, his uh, wanting to protect Eris will allow him to actually commit the unspeakable, something he doesn't actually want to do. For instance, take someone's life. We've seen in the past few episodes that Rudy really does not want to see people die, which makes sense. The morals and all that, and how it fits in from his world, and how he isn't just having his overall morals and mentality bent to the will of this new world, he still is retaining everything he knows from his previous world. And however, even though we know that, him making, you know, that clarification within himself, like, you know, if these people keep it up, I'll just wipe out this town, it makes sense, because he realizes that he's just being cornered to such a degree, there was really no option, he's like, okay, if I, if I can't continue on and be able to make money here, or do anything, and the entire, like, our life here is gonna be ruined, I might as well just wipe it out to keep everyone safe, help out Eris and all that, and he was about to make that declaration, but thanks to Rui jumping in and stopping that, that, in fact, did not happen. However, this does show us the extent of what Rudy is capable of, and that he is willing to take someone's life if it means to protect someone. He That is not out of his realm of possibility. He will do that. So we got a really good glimpse at what he could become in the future and how he might become very different from what he is right now. Because even though Rudy technically is reincarnated and he is technically older mentally, he's still technically like a child because he hasn't really experienced the entirety of the world. And this is really technically his first time he's ever interacted with a lot of people in life. And so he's getting to see all these new experiences, all these new things that happen, and it's very overwhelming. You can even see his interactions within the town and how it's over overwhelming him. You can see that this can lead to a lot of depression and sadness, and he even makes a statement where he's like, ever since we came to this town, everything keeps going wrong. He even says that, which makes sense, because he thinks everything's gonna work out, because everything up to this very point in his life, while being reincarnated, has kind of worked out. I mean, he's learned magic really easily, he's managed to get a job to be able to save up money to go to a magic academy, he's met Eris and got that to work out with her, where she's not, you know, evil anymore, and, you know, she trusts in him. Him. You know, there's a lot of things that's been going well for him. He's had a little bit of, you know, downwards, but he has had mostly a good steady life. He hasn't really had any 
major, major complication. And ever since coming to this town, he's really been forced to kind of break out of that barrier. He's been in that happy-go-lucky world where everything goes right. He really has having to work for things. And that's where like someone like Eris and Rui comes in to help him out. So I do appreciate all these little elements. It's giving a lot more to Rudy's character, showing that he's not going to have a steady adventure. He's not going to have an adventure to where everything is going to work out instantly. He is going to have to have others really pull their own weight to make sure things work out. So yeah, there's just so much to really love about this episode. I appreciate all the setup for the upcoming second half of Mushoku Tensei. Another thing too, as we get a little bit more detail into what Rui thinks a warrior actually is, he basically says a warrior is someone that will stop at no means to protect someone. Basically, if you want to protect someone, you must be willing to commit probably unspeakable evil, pretty much. Maybe wipe out an entire town if you want to protect someone. You must be willing to do anything to protect your comrades and protect the ones you love, which says a lot. It basically shows that if you are an enemy, you're as good as dead. You can be thrown away to the wolves. There is no saving you. And I do wonder if, you know, Rudy is going to become like that or if he's not going to become like that. There's so many questions, so many possibilities. And I assume eventually we're going to get to see a lot of uh, Rudy's old self, what we've seen throughout this first season, distort into something a little bit more darker because I've heard many great things about the series. Like, people talk about the series all the time saying it's really good, the light novel's good, the web novel's good, so I want to assume some crazy things happen later on, which that's something I do want to talk about before I wrap up this video. I'm thinking of actually reading the light novel or the web novel. I, I don't know which one I'm going to do yet. I've heard that the light novel is censored. I don't know if this is true. This is just all I've heard at this point is that the light novel apparently is censored because there's a lot of things like when it retains to Paul as a character that was very censored and kind of led it to where people were really shocked when they watched the anime and how despicable and scum like Paul was in the anime. Now, th I could be entirely wrong. I've just heard this from a good group of people that said this, but I don't know if that's entirely true. So if you have read the light novel... Let me know if that's true. However, I have heard that the web novel doesn't really skirt around any dark themes. It keeps everything in line with what the anime has shown. So, I I'm debating reading the web novel, but if the light novel actually doesn't censor anything, then I probably will read the light novel because technically the anime is following the light novel, not the web novel. And that's that's a big thing because remember, web novel is basically like a rough draft and then that's compiled into a light novel and then the anime is taking from the light novel. So there's details probably in the web novel that never made it into the final draft. That's kind of why the ReZero web novel and light novel is just so different and why people complain about it for some reason, which doesn't make sense. But yeah, so I, I'm debating on reading but I don't know if I should wait. I mean, like I said, it's not that long of a wait. Summer, it's just around the corner. I mean, it's already March of this year. Summer's going to be around June, July. That's when it's going to start. So it's really not that long. But even then, I really want to know what's going to happen. So we'll see. I, I, I don't know, but I might read it. But it just depends on exactly if the light novel is censored or not. But okay, I think I want to leave it at that, though. I had a good time talking about the series. Thank you so much for everyone that watched this series and, you know, watched my videos alongside of it. I do appreciate it greatly. It does help me out a lot. It helps out the channel. It allows me to continue doing what I love. For instance, talking about anime and manga. Just thank you so much for all of you that have left a like, a comment, all my videos for Mushoku Tensei. Hope to see you guys more on other videos and for when the continuation of Mushoku Tensei happens in Summer of Anime. With that, guys, I love you. Be safe. Stay healthy. Chibi out.